Hi everyone, welcome to the GCC Higher Revision video. It's 10 days to go into your first GCC maths paper, so keep up the hard work, you're doing really well. And today we're going to be doing a practice paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a practice paper in the description below. So feel free to, in this video, to just stop now, I print it and then do that paper if you want to, and then come back tomorrow and I'll go through the full solutions. Alternatively, what I'm going to do is, okay, the paper's in the description below, so feel free to do that. As you're doing that practice paper, if there's any particular questions you're a bit stuck on or you need a bit of a hint, in this video, what I'm going to do is, after I finish talking now, I'm then going to go through each question and give you a bit of a hint in each one. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. I'm just going to give you a bit of a hint in terms of if you, you know, are stuck on a question. And particularly with the, the video, with it being sort of broken up into sections on YouTube, you can jump to question three or five or seven and so on. So if you need any hint in any particular question, and I'll put the timestamps in the description below, so if you need a hint in any particular question, feel free to scroll down, find that question, click on it, and I'll give you a bit of a hint on it. So let's get started. Hi, so today we're going to be looking at the GCSE Higher Revision questions, and we're looking at part three. So we're looking at the third booklet of practice questions for GCSE Higher. So in this video, we're going to focus on hints. So let's have a look at each question. I'll give you a bit of a hint for each question. Okay, so question number one, so 1a, we've got simplify x squared minus 4x minus 32 over 5x squared minus 41x plus 8. So this is an algebraic fractions question that is simplifying algebraic fractions. So my hint for you would be to factorize the numerator and factorize the denominator and then see if there's anything you can cancel out. And part b, and also if you want to recap on this, 17 days ago we covered algebraic fractions. Now, in terms of part b, we are doing uh, algebraic fractions again and it's subtraction. We've got 9 over x minus 3 subtract 2 over x plus 1. So in terms of this, remember you want to get a common denominator. So multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by this denominator, and the numerator and denominator of this fraction by that denominator, and then you'll have equivalent fractions, and then just try and simplify that. Okay, so that's question one. That's my hint for question one. And again, if you need to recap, 17 days to go, or algebraic fractions and corporate maths. Question number two. So question number two is on histograms, and here we've got a reading histograms question. We've got some speeds in miles per hour of cars through a village, and this histogram shows the frequency density vertically, and then horizontally we've got the speed. And then we've been asked to work out what percentage of the cars travelled 30 miles per hour or less. So in this question, what you would want to do is work out the frequency. So remember, to work out frequency, we do frequency density times collapse width. So you can work out the frequency for each of the bars. That'll tell you how many then cars are all together. You can then find out how many were traveling 30 miles per hour or less, and then write it as a percentage. And if you want to recap on that, 75 days to go, we covered reading histograms. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number three. So question number three is on direct proportion, and we've got h is directly proportional to the cube of c. And we've been told that whenever h is equal to 480, c is equal to 2. And we've been asked to express h in terms of c. So we covered direct proportion with 42 days to go. So first of all, in this question, what I'd do is I'd have a look at this statement. I'd write down that h is proportional to the cube of c. So that's my start. And then I'd get rid of the proportional symbol, put in k, the constant proportionality, and then use this information to get what k is. And then you'd be able to express h in terms of c. Okay, part B, we've been asked to find H whenever C is equal to 5. Well, then just use your answer to part A and substitute in 5 for C, and you'll be able to do that. And part C, we've been asked to find C whenever H is equal to 30,000. Well, then you can just use that equation again, and then you can find out what C is whenever H is 30,000. Okay, our next question, question number four. So question number four is on exact trig values, and we covered exact trig values for 12 days to go. So we've been asked to work out the exact value of sine 45 plus sine 60. So in this question, what you'd want to do is you'd want to write down what the sine of 45 is, and to think of your exact trig values, and likewise, the sine of 60. And if you've got them on your windows with your window pens or the Corp Maps revision card, you know, get that out and make sure you know what those are. So write down what those are, and then you need to add them together, so you might need to do a bit of addition there. Okay, let's have a look at question number five. So question number five is on an exponential graph, so we've got to draw this exponential graph. I, my tip to you would be to do an xy table, and then I would substitute the values of x, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. And it's a calculator question, so you've got that there to help you if you need to. And then that's it, really. And then just plot the points and draw that exponential graph. Okay, question number six. So question number six, we've got this speed time graph, and it's uh, for a toy rocket. So it starts at zero seconds, the speed zero, and then the speed increases, and then the speed decreases again. And then part A says work out the total distance traveled in 16 seconds, and use four strips of equal width. So my hint for this question is we want to find the area under this graph. So because it's four equal strips, we would divide 16 by four, and that gives us four seconds. So you're going to draw a line at four seconds, 
eight seconds and 12 seconds and you're going to join up and you'll make a triangle there a trapezium there a trapezium there and a triangle there and find the area of the triangle the trapezium the trapezium and the triangle add them all up and then that total answer that total area will be our estimate for the distance traveled by the rocket because the area under a speed time graph is the distance traveled and that's your part a and then part b says is the answer to a an underestimate or an overestimate so just consider the triangle the, the trapezium the trapezium and the triangle and look Look at what you find the area for and figure out would that be below the actual area would that be an underestimate or would it be above the actual area and would that be an overestimate so then have a look at your graph and figure that out okay next question question number seven okay question number seven so question number seven is on the nth term and we've got this linear sequence 14 11 8 5 2 so just figure out what it's going down by and then just write the multiples of that number so for instance if it's going down by seven that's not i'd write minus seven minus 14 minus 21 and so on it's not going down by seven you figure out what it's going down by write the multiples of that number write that number of n and then figure out what you do to those numbers to get to the sequence and that'll give you your nth term and part b says find the 50th term just substitute that into your nth term and you'd find the 50th term Okay, question number eight. Question number eight is on the inverse function. So we've got f of x equals 8x plus 3. And we've been asked to find f minus 1 of x. So in this question, what I would do is I would let this equal y. So I'd let y equals 8x plus 3. Make x a subject. And then whenever you've made x a subject, that'll let you know what the inverse function is. And likewise, I would do the same for part b. Okay, our next question, question number nine. So question number nine is on completing the square. So remember, we've got this quadratic, we want to do completing the square, so we're gonna open up our brackets, we're gonna write x. We're then gonna half the coefficient of x, so you're gonna half this number, put it here, close brackets and then squared. You're then gonna take away whatever that number is squared, so whatever number you wrote in the bracket, you're gonna square that and take it away, and then you put your plus seven on the end and then simplify. Okay, our next question, question number nine. So question number nine is on density. So remember that density is equal to mass divided by volume. So you'll be able to use that to be able to work out your answer to part A and then maybe part B as well. So that, that formula will help you out with that question. Okay, question number 11. So question number 11 is on speed, distance, and time. So this question, remember that speed is equal to distance divided by time. And you could rearrange that and make T the subject or D the subject. And that'll help you do this question and you'll be able to, to work it out. Okay, question number 12. Okay, question number 12 is a vectors question. And part A, we've been asked to work out the vector OB. So we want to find the vector OB. So what I probably would do in this question is we know the vector AO and we know the vector AB. So I'd go, if I wanted the vector OB, I would go from O to A and from A to B, and that would be the vector OB. Part B then tells us that Q is the midpoint and that B is the midpoint. And then we've been asked to show that PQC is a straight line. So we want to show that PQC is a straight line. Now, if you watched the video 16 days ago, I go through examples like that. But if you want to show that PQC is a straight line, find the vector PQ, find the vector QC, show that they're multiples of each other. And if they're multiples of each other, that means that then they are parallel to each other. And if they both go through the point Q, that means they're in a straight line. Because if they're parallel and go through the same point, that means they're in a straight line. Okay, so that's question number 12. Okay, question number 13. Question number 13 is on quadratic graphs, and we cover quadratic graphs with 19 days to go. And we've got this curve, and it's in the form x squared plus bx plus c, so it's a quadratic, and it's an x squared quadratic. And we've got some points that it passes through, it passes through minus 6, 0, 0, minus 24, and the point p, 0. And in this question, we've been asked to find the coordinates of the turning point. So if I want to find the coordinates of this turning point, I would either want to find the equation, because if I find the equation, then I can figure out, because if I can find out what p is, I can then find in the middle and then that'll tell us the x coordinate and then I can find the x coordinate substitute into the equation and get the y coordinate that'll tell me the coordinates of the turning point alternatively if I knew this equation I could do completing the square and then figure out where that turning point is as well but in terms of this what I would do is I would think about well if we've got this quadratic it's in the form y equals x squared that means it could be bracket 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 x and x and because this is minus six i know that one of them will have to be plus six because remember that where it crosses the x-axis y is equal to zero and, if, and for this to be equal to zero x would have to be equal to minus six and that's what we've got there so that's one of the brackets and then also the fact that we've got this minus 24 so whenever you expand these brackets you're going to get minus 24 so that means that you can figure out this inside the bracket and whenever you find out what that is then you can find out then where it would cross the x-axis and then once you find that out then you can figure out the coordinates of that turning point Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 14. So question number 14 is on geometric sequences. So we've got the first three terms of S, they are x plus 24, x, and 3x minus 32. And we've been asked to find the value for x. 
Now, because this is a geometric sequence, what we know is that we multiply, you know, if we multiply the first term by a certain value, we get the second term. If we then multiply the second term by that same value, we get the third term and so on. So that means that if you divide the third term by the second term, you'll find out what you're multiplying by. And if you divide the second term by the first term, you get the same answer. So then you can write an equation there using that. And if you watch the video 11 days to go, we recap that or we show that. And then, so if you've got an equation, you can solve that and find the value of X. And also spot or notice the fact that X is positive. So if there are two solutions, make sure you choose the positive one. And then once you find out what X is, you can then figure out the sequence and then you can find the fifth term. Okay, let's look at our last question. It's a geometric proof. And if you watched the video 13 days ago, we go through a geometric proof. And this is a bit of a geometric proof question. It's actually similar to one of these questions in this video. So my hint is, for this question, if you want a hint, watch this video for a hint. <laughs> and that's it. So we'll see you tomorrow whenever we go through the answers. And that's it. So in this video, we've given you hints on all of those practice paper questions. So that paper that's available today, and it's in the description below there for you. So remember to print it and hopefully you've done it as well. But in this video, I've given you hints in each of the questions. If you need a hint in any of them, hopefully you've been able to do it and just needed a couple of hints. Who knows? Um, but those hints have been there for you. And tomorrow I'll go through the full solution. So I'll see you tomorrow at three o'clock for the full solutions to this paper. And I'll go through and talk about how to do every question. So I'll see you tomorrow at three o'clock for the next one. Cheers. Bye.